If you're a regular viewer, you might remember a few months ago my uh, massive air pump stopped working. And uh, I didn't make a video about it, but I did order myself some replacement diaphragms from the UK. And they turned out to be the wrong size, so I had a go at cutting them down to size. But uh, the whole pattern didn't match up on the originals. So I ordered some of the right size, um, 40 quid in at this point. Um, and they lasted for about two weeks before they packed up. So this time around, I got some of the uh, very stretchy Ninja Flex filament. This Ninja Flex is one of these flexible filaments that lets you make rubbery, squishy parts like this. And if I grab one of the stringy bits on the underneath, you can see it's actually really quite elastic in terms of uh, how far you can stretch it. And I thought I'd uh, have a go at making some DIY. Um, diaphragms and bits and bobs. Anyway, I'm just going to give you a quick look inside this air pump and uh, show you what I've done. Getting into this thing actually took me a while to work out. There's four feet on the bottom held in by four fairly short screws and if you take the screws out nothing happens at all and then uh, I tried getting into this thing here which feels like it should just lift off but there's a screw buried in the middle there but there's nothing under there apart from a little bit of filter foam um, the actual secret to getting in is if you take the rubber feet out there's another set of screws buried underneath the rubber feet in the four corners take those four screws out and then the lid comes off Inside the pump itself, we've got, it's a dual diaphragm pump, so at either end, there's, ah, can get this to come apart. Obviously this normally has screws in, but I've pre-dismantled it. So, diaphragms sit in this section here. And they would do if it wasn't ripped. And uh, inside the little end caps, there's a little filter valve here, a um, little flexible one, and again these have all fallen to pieces, I don't know if you just saw the centre fall out of that one, but these sit over these little rubber lugs, one there and one on the other side as well. I took some measurements of the existing disc, knocked it up in my 3D software and knocked out these. This is where the diaphragm is 1.6mm and it's not as stretchy as the original. So I thought I'd have another go and I shrank them down a little bit, made a slightly thinner diaphragm 1.2mm thick and that feels about good enough. And I made some of these filter discs as well. Filters? Um, valve discs as well. So I'm going to reassemble it with that. Now I have actually already tried doing this pump before and I used some um, bicycle puncture repair patches as the valves and that's what this red gunk on here is. The rubber on them just didn't survive very long at all. Um, it all sort of disintegrated and after two or three weeks the pump was knackered again. So I'm going to rebuild that now and um, mess on that and see if... Uh, we work and we'll find out how long we work for over the next few months or weeks or days or hours. There, that's valve on the uh, outlet side and on the inlet side and there I think I went with 0.6mm thick on those which gives them a fairly reasonable little flappy feel. I think they'll do the trick. And that's the diaphragm going in and uh, then gets this silicon washer and then an end cap piece to keep it all locked in and then a washer and a nut. So with both diaphragms in you can kind of see the action of this pump it's just a big electromagnet you know transformer core in the middle with um, a magnet attached in the middle and uh, when the mains oscillates one way this will oscillate one way and push the diaphragm out and the other way pull that diaphragm in and that's how the air actually gets moved, that with the two one-way valves 
I'll put the other valves in and give this a test. Just opening up the back, here's the one remaining original valve and you can actually see, if I lift that up, that we've torn away can't see anything there, yeah, there we are, we can see we've actually torn out the centre of that valve disc already it's there, so I'm going to replace that one and that'll be all four of them swapped over for uh, NinjaFlex 3D printed replacements wonder if this will all work I think chances are good that it'll work, question is how long will it work for Ah well, we'll find out. OK, ready for the switch on test. Here goes. Oh, that'll work better if I put more screws in. OK, time for test number two, this time with all the screws in. Well, I wasn't convinced that that pump's pushing as much air thro through as it should be, so I'm now making another set of diaphragms at 0.8mm thickness instead, and we'll see if they're, well, they will be a bit more stretchy, and uh, hopefully that'll make me happy. But that's going to take a couple of hours. So I've got my 0.8mm thick diaphragms in there now, which are a lot more rubbery, and uh, I was getting a lot more airflow. But I'm now on to my next problem, in that my little valve discs don't entirely seat properly at the moment. The little rubber bung in the centre is pulling them down and distorting them. So um, I'm not getting a good seal around there, so I'm going to have a little go at redesigning my valve discs. And uh, see if I can improve on that. <coughs> So here's the problem, I'd measured the diameter of this black ring here and that was 19mm but actually there's this moulding mark here where it's come out of the mould and that was getting in the way of it. So version 2 of these discs, this was version 1 which was 19mm, version 2 I've made it 17mm and I don't know if it comes out on the camera, I've put a little 1mm high lip around the outer edge to try and help it press flat and keep shape. So I'll give it a try with them. Okay, I've actually put in these new valves the opposite way around so that the little lip I added seats down on the valve seat and they actually seem to uh, sit really quite nicely like that so I'm going to give those a try. I've got a couple more printing still but um, I think that'll increase my efficiency and the pressure this thing can do. So I'm going to screw that side back together now. So although you might think that was a very promising sign that we've got uh, bubbles happening, I dropped the stone down a bit and kind of run out of bubbles. We uh, clearly aren't getting the pressure we used to get out of that pump. So I'm going to have to um, I don't know, find somewhere that sells the proper spares, I guess. I guess we can call that one a Ninja Flex fail. A few little bubbles breaking the surface, but that's the only air stone it's running at the moment. So, um, ah, disappointing. Oh well, kept me entertained for a few hours. Okay, a couple of weeks have gone past and we're um, back on the bench again for kind of a post-mortem though I've already checked this out so I know what's wrong but I'll just show you. So these are the 1.2mm thick diaphragms that I printed and I um, don't know how well it will show up on the camera, hopefully it will get this right. But we've got lots and lots of tiny little holes. But um, to the naked eye this makes it a bit easier to see all the holes that are in there. These little discs that I printed for the valves are actually even worse and um, I really don't know how well this is showing up but hopefully it's getting across the idea that there's actually just lots of pinpricks in there. So I had a thought about alternative ways to deal with this and um, I ordered myself a bottle of latex rubber and I had a brief go last night at just I just poured a bit of latex out to see kind of how stretchy and how durable it actually is and I think this is probably a good choice for the material for these little disc valves because it wants to be something fairly soft and flexible and I think that's probably pretty close 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 3D print a mould so I can mould some of these little valve discs. Give that a try. And then these ones, I'm going to take the 1.4mm thick ones, which seem to work just about the best, and I'm just going to paint those with a thin layer of latex to seal up all the pores on them, paint them on both sides, and um, give that another try. So uh, I'll try that now. Okay, so I haven't made a mould yet because the uh, printer's busy at the moment, but I have covered those four flat discs that I've made, disc valves that I've made, given them a good covering in uh, latex and these ones as well on both sides. And the same, these are the 1.4 mils that came out first, so they should be dry in a few hours and we'll see how we, uh, if we get any more luck. So these parts have had a few hours to uh, dry now and they're covered with a layer of latex and it's gone see-through and you can just see that one's peeling a little bit at the edge there. But um, I covered them both sides and I did the 1.6mm discs which I thought were a bit too stiff when I tried them out before and the 1.4s that I had in there, I just did the 1.6s as a spare. And um, I've done my two different valve types so far and I've checked these and now they're totally, totally non-porous. So. Um, I'm going to reassemble the compressor with those in. I've got my uh, valve moulds printing at the moment. So I'll um, have a go at making some pure latex ones once those are finished. But uh, I figure this won't be the last time I have this pump in pieces, so I'm going to give it a try with this and see what the results are like. So my little valve moulds are off the printer and I'm just filling them up by uh, just dripping the latex in off the brush and it spreads its way around. Trying not to get it on the centre pin if I can help it because I want it to come out as a clean moulding. So uh, I have to leave this four to six hours or probably ten to twelve realistically. So I'll find out tomorrow if this is working or not. Okay, it's time for the balloon test again. Well, that's looking a lot better than it did last time. Sounds pretty good as well. Stop that before we go pop. Oh, give that a try in the greenhouse tomorrow. Seems to be airtight. The balloon's not going down. That means my valves are working. Excellent. Oh, we are slowly going down there. So I've had these little uh, flap discs cooking on the back of the monitor for the last 12 hours or so and I think they should be about ready now. So I'm going to get them out and uh, see what they're like. And here they are. And uh, they're nice and flexible nice and stretchy um, got the right shape I think they're gonna work don't know how durable they are du how durable they'll be or uh, how they'll react to high temperatures but um, I think I'm gonna pull the air compressor to pieces and give a go, that was a bit manky but um, I think I'll give them a try so here's my little latex valves which seem to seat themselves really really well so, um, Hopefully that will get a really good pressure seal around there. That's one side done and I'll just uh, get on with the other side now and then give that a good hour long run in the greenhouse and see how we get on. And in case anyone's wondering why I went to the trouble of remoulding these valves with latex, this is kind of what I was worrying about happening. This latex has a well, it's known for self-releasing from mould so although I painted it on and it filled the pores on this thing in the uh, well, in the process of getting it out of the pump, that layer of latex has come off that particular valve, so that's going to be full of holes again. 
but um, that shouldn't be the case with my moulded latex discs. Okay, time for balloon test number three with the latex valves on. And uh, what I really want to see here is how long that balloon stays inflated for after I disconnect the power. So let's get it let let it get nice and big. Right. See how long that stays the same size for. Well, I really can't see that shrinking at all. So I think that's an indication that my valves are now working properly. That's really not getting any smaller. Got 45 seconds on the camera. So I think we can say jobs are good and on that. And um, the only thing that remains to be seen, well, is does it push air through the water and how long before these discs need replacing again? Okay, and here we go. And we have a winner. Don't know if you can see any of that. There we go. Loads of bubbles. That's how things are supposed to look in here. Awesome. Happy Jim. Well, hopefully by the time I've edited all this together, it'll turn out as something worth watching. And um, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers, folks. Bye.